So right now, this is the first part of the, the testing phase of the Macaw War Club. Today, I got with me uh, Dustin Lake and Jeremy Holmson. How do you say your name? Perfect. Okay. From uh, Wing Chun Punch Club in Victoria, BC, and also part of a larger um, martial arts club. What is that called? Dragon Central. Dragon Central in Victoria. So there's two different styles of the Macaw War Club. One is the weight center is a lot higher up and um, this other one here the weight center is about right in the middle the length of these about 21 inches uh, the swings of these are very different this is having the weight center closer to you um, you know it feels like you can do really quick movements this however is kind of a longer swing you can imagine like the weight of the pendulum uh, we're not going to use this one today. We're going to be focusing on the, the more paddle style. Another interesting feature about this usually features a lanyard with a hole in the center, and that's to prevent you from dropping your weapon or also your enemy or attacker from um, from being able to take your weapon away. And one else, one other thing I like to show about the weapon is it's very difficult for somebody to come and take that weapon away because. There's nothing to grab on to. So anyway, uh, Jeremy now is going to show us some drills that can be done with a weapon of this size. Um, what was your first impression of the Macaw War Club when you got it in your hand? You know, was it like, what kind of weapon was it compared to like, say, the Filipino stick fighting or the Wing Chun butterfly knives? Well, I think it feels very, um, like it could be used very precisely and very tight, mm -hmm. uh, but it still has the option to be able to throw through with some big strikes and carry, let that weight carry through. So what range do you think this was used at mostly? <sighs> I'm thinking it's a good mid-range, um, also close range. Long range, not so much, but... Uh, um, so the, the range. Yeah, yeah. So you were, pretty so you close. were right in your enemy's face when you did Absolutely, and uh, I mean, while you could be poking with it, yeah. uh, more likely you are hitting with this part, or the weighted part of it, right? Yeah. So it is going to be this close. Yeah. Right? So, well, the name of it is the Chituth, which is a split your skull or plate face. So you need know, that thing, you have to be very, very close. You're looking your enemy right in the eyes. Yeah. And I think even for very close range, it's a very nice big butt end of this thing. Yeah. So for close smashing. Uh -huh. Right, it's it's right there. So if we're in really tight, and you've grabbed me over here, and I have you here. Like we could actually do this very close yeah. range. So I don't have to be back here to actually crack you with it. Quick butt to the you know throat or the face is going to be enough. Right? Yeah. So mathematically speaking, uh, there's not a lot of different options for angles to that this weapon can really be used at. Um, you know, none of the knowledge of how this weapon was used is directly passed down, but. I think just through using it and you know looking at some of the other martial arts, it's possible to bring this style back. And you know that's part of what Jeremy is helping with us is trying to figure out how this weapon was used. So what kinds of strikes can be done with this weapon? You know, with the limitations, you can't hit on the side because it's typically a whale bone and just break right in right. half. And that was something I was wondering about. Could you use it sideways? Yeah. Because that creates a bunch of other things uh -huh. you could be doing, as well as blocking. Yeah. Right. But if someone has an equal weapon, yeah, and hits that with that edge, it like you say, it'll probably crack. Yeah. I imagine that would be a motivation for an enemy too. Is that if they both have war clubs, you're going to try to hit your enemy's war on club exactly. on the side yeah. and break it. Yeah. yeah. Good point. So, so I'd I'd say sticking with that edge, mm -hmm. right? Maybe throwing a poke once in a while. Yeah. But definitely that. Uh, clubbing or uh, maybe whipping kind of action. But so would that be to keep your enemy maybe at a distance or something? Like exactly. Kind of if you think of it as like a boxer's jab, yeah. right? Because like poke, poke, snatch. Yeah. All right. So I mean, yeah, definitely. You get that in the face. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a good distraction. Yeah. And then bam. Right. So yeah. Um, the other option would be, you know, after a good strike, to step in and drive it into solar plexus or maybe into the ribs, break a rib. Yeah. Possibly depending on how sharp some of these were, I mean you could you could puncture it, but you at least get a good uh, a good little bruise there. I did hear that the butt of the weapon is used. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I, I think that's a great thing. 
great part of this weapon for certain. Uh, plus the, the counterbalancing, the balance of it is really, really nice. Yeah, that's one thing about it is having a counterbalance on it. It really feels like this. When you swing it for a while, it feels like it wants to get rotated. Because mm -hmm. it's really natural to feel that rotation. Exactly. So some of the strikes you're going to do will actually rotate right into the next one. Right? So, so for practice purposes, we'll just start with a nice straight Stopping, the camera a little bit. stopping the strikes. So, right. so yeah, you guys want to go through it briefly. So we're not going to follow through on these strikes. We'll just do one, two, three, four, oh, five. Did I know it's about the six? And then seven comes straight down. Oh wow. Okay. And then eight is the poke. Okay. Or the step. Which is yeah. Good. So how is that sequence again? So we have one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so that's uh, eight different combinations of strikes right there. Right. And so exactly. actually it's going to be, it would be eight blocks or six blocks. Right. Okay. Right. So, so keep in mind natural tendencies as well with the weapon, right? Is Commonly, people are going to go either this strike yeah. as like the big kind of haymaker sort of strike, yeah. and if you think of targeting as well, it's going for the head, so it yeah. is probably going to be that kind of angle, uh -huh. right? Uh, the other Can you one, block a strike like that with a single hand? Yes. So if you think of it in terms of simplicity, yeah. all, you need, <laughs> all you need to do is, <laughs> is turn to face it. Yeah. So if you have your weapon in front yeah. of you and it comes down, just turn and face it. There you go. Okay. That's it. And as long as you have that edge facing the point of contact, yeah. it, it's not going to break your weapon. So there's mathematically not anything else that could be going on for a block of that. <laughs> right. um, the, the other option would be uh, what we talk about is like bonsai, right? So when the strike, if you do that strike here, yeah. I can do bonsai. Okay. Right. So, so that's that's flipping it. Just okay. flipping it over. Right. That seems like it might take a long time. Uh, it depends where your starting point is, yeah. right? And depending on how fast this, uh, this is right. But yeah, it could take a little long, but if I'm here, and then it creates yeah. other, uh, okay. other options, right? Uh -huh. So in terms of like flipping it from here to there, for the, I mean, it doesn't take much to crack that coconut, right? <laughs> so here, so, and then so that's going to be for the first, for the first strike. Yeah, exactly. And then the second strike, same thing, all right? Okay. Third strike, just turn and face it. Okay. So the strength is facing facing your uh, point of contact. Right? And this same thing. Right? This same thing. This is this is the most basic way, yeah. the fastest, simplest way to block. Right? Now here is a good option yeah. for that. Okay. Flipped over. Right? You can get your other hand up there to help support yeah. that. And then it's it also should be here anyway, so you can grab your opponent. Yeah. Either their weapon and their hand, their weapon. Uh -huh. It's not sharp, so it's kind of nice if you could get in here. Yeah. You could actually hold that for a oh, second, yeah. right? Bust that arm. So I guess that is one limitation of this design is that if your enemy did grab you get your close weapon, enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, and then uh, the str uh, the poke. Right. Uh -huh. If you were poking, then I would turn it over. What too. kind of technique is it for the poke? You can just do um, basically in front of you, yeah. right? And as the poke comes, I decide do I go this way? Is there any kind of it, like rotating? Well, oh, for the actual up? strike itself. Yeah. Like, is it um, typically, up, I like to down. start palm up uh -huh. and extend out. So there's a spiral. rotation. Yeah. So a rotation like this <coughs> from underneath. Yeah. Exactly. Um, if you think of it in terms of an empty-handed strike, it would be. Can you start from up and come into it? Like this, or do you point first and do it? Um, it could come from anywhere. Yeah, yeah it really could. Uh, I think the important thing is that your wrist is straight. Yeah. When you're doing that, you don't want to have it bent. Okay. It's going to be weak. It's going to be a point that can easily be collapsed. Yeah. All right. But if you straighten it, everything lined up down here. All right. One thing I noticed about holding this club, though, I don't know if it feels the same on you, is that you use it for a long time and you're doing this kind of rotation. Uh, my first finger wants to come up because it starts getting sore. Right. I'm not sure. Well, you know what? Feel the same. So, so there's a couple, um, couple takes on that. Yeah. A couple theories. So, um, Japanese sword work, side, that sort of thing, uh -huh. uh, and the modernist training that I do. Yeah. It's a three-finger grip. Wow. These two just kind of hang out. 
They can be used to disarm, they can be used to control, especially the side, you can control yeah. the angle of your side a little better uh -huh. using these two. The grip is only from these three, really, and, and the, the, the way it pushes into your palm and sucks to it, yeah. Yeah, it's all you need. So I wasn't too far off. No, theory. exactly. Um, I do know from my own training with uh, more Chinese butterfly swords, we tend to hold it a little bit more like a, like a cloth, yeah. like, like, a, like a baseball bat sort of thing where you, it's a full hand grip. Uh, so that's with the butterfly swords? Butterfly swords, but is there any butterfly swords that are sharp or they don't kind of go? Um, they're, they're, they should be sharp, mm -hmm. but not sword sharp. Yeah. All right? That's, that's my opinion. It should be like axe sharp, like yeah. a really good axe. Like if you have, a, if you really love your axe and you keep that thing sharp, yeah. that's the kind of sharpness of butterfly sword should be. It's for hacking, and it needs to be able to cut, right? But it's not for slicing, right? <laughs> it's not a katana. It's not razor sharp, right? It's axe sharp. So, so if I want to practice some eight basic drills for the Macau War Club, mm -hmm. what kind of stuff would you recommend just to oh. get a sense of blocking and striking? Well, I, I, I recommend definitely going through the eight angles uh -huh. and getting your body into it, right? Yeah. Like we were doing yesterday, that whole turning your body yeah. to power the weapon. So you're, you don't want to stand still and just use your arm. That's okay for getting the angles, but when you actually want to start to feel the weapon, yeah. turn your body a little bit side so to there's side. there's no dangers Losing center line, like, you know. Well, basically what we want to do is, if you're thinking of center line in terms of turning your hips and yeah. your body, you want to lead with that and the weapon's just behind it. Okay. So right. it's you're leading with your body first? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's just going to power right from the ground, right? And you're moving your feet with it too. Yeah. Right. So, um, I'd say as far as getting us to, to follow through a little bit, with the angles, we try the uh, eight strikes one more time. Yeah. But this time, actually, following right through with it. Okay. Okay. So as you follow through, you will circle naturally, let uh -huh. the weight of the weapon circle right through, and come down into the next strike. Okay. All right. And then across, and across, and then upwards, and that circles through to upwards, and then from there, you can just let it circle around and down, or from there. You can circle it and block the side of your head here and down. Right? And then, so again, maybe just following through. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And keep in mind, always leading with that edge, yeah. the striking edge, right? Uh -huh. So when you when you go to this side. You turn it over, calm down, yeah. and strike with that side again. Mm -hmm. right? um, there are ways, so, so typically I would strike with this side, yeah. right? but as far as if I grab you and I want to hit with that side, yeah. it works. Yeah. <laughs> it just isn't as strong of a, a strike. Right? Yeah, that is one thought I had is I noticed that the, the club does have, you would think of this as a strike lane, but I did notice that. Um, the other it, it's too it's like too bladed. And so I was wondering mm -hmm. maybe it feels really awkward to throw. Uh, it's partly because your grip isn't as strong that way, right? Yeah. So if you hit it that way, it can pop out of your thumb a little bit easier. But uh, realistically, um, actually some some guys I train with, they'll do a strike like this yeah. and at the last second flip it over uh -huh. and hit with the other side. Yeah. So what happens it, it hits around the guard, right? It's cool. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you have a guard up here, like protecting yourself, yeah. right? And if you if you put up a block, right? So if you're blocking from your face yeah. already, so you just go straight to a block yeah. right there, right? So if I just do number one strike, yeah, you can stop it easily. If I do number one strike and flip it over, so keep it there, right? Oh, look wow. at that. Right? So it could be with the tip. It could be with this yeah. side right here. Right? Typically, I don't train like that, <coughs> but I know guys who do, and it's pretty tricky. To it's difficult to deal with. Even I was, if you have I was wondering if you could use a block where you can come in at an angle and if you, you flip it around, it's kind of with it this way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Totally. And then you have other close range things like circles, right? Like a quick circle right oh, here. Yeah. Right? So I don't have to come up and down, right? It can be right here, boom, oh, right? Like that. That's going to do some damage. Yeah. Very, very close range. Without yeah. having to give yourself space and come back out. Right? Yeah. Um, that's that's actually a lot of uh, interesting. Single flip, single flip, double flip. 
So these, these, these things come from close in here and down. And it feels like you do a, like a flex if you get like a, like yes. a you grab it. Exactly. So, right. so if you want to let it relax, let the weight of the weapon relax, yeah. draw, and then boom, snap it out at the end. So this is like a lot of this, the rolling stuff that is still in the power. Yeah, it probably is. Big jump punching is a lot like that, right? And actually a lot of good punching from other martial arts too. They should be doing relaxed and then snapping out yeah. of it. Some people think you should just be able to go right through it. Uh, I like that I like the snap at the end. For some reason I always thought it was being like the haymaker weapon where you're doing this, but I never had thought of the possibility. Just a quick little yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you come from this side, this uh -huh. side, but you get two of them, yeah. right? <laughs> they could be here, because they're short enough, they're not going to hit you. Right? Yeah. That's how you decide on the length of your weapon, uh -huh. if, uh, at least with the way I train, because it shouldn't come really past your biceps. So that must right. be part of the reason it's maybe you short, because they were using that for getting the side oh. rotation. Very possible. Yeah. 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 If it were any longer, you could do that. <laughs> exactly. And then you can also, if you have two, you can do high, low. Yeah. Right. So it's just top down, right? So if you're using this, this like, if you're using these like the Filipino double stick. What would some of this look like? Well, then it'd be a little more circular, and floating. All right. So again, like focusing on that edge. Uh -huh. right. Is there a big difference between using these and the Filipino? Um, they're they're somewhat longer on big sticks. Yes, the sticks are typically longer, uh, at least a few inches, um, and they don't have this kind of weight to them. Yeah. Does that help it, or does it change it? Or I think it helps it flow a little bit. Oh yeah. Having that weight, and I like the flow of it. Uh huh. I think maybe it's also that counterbalance, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's sneaky, right? You don't you can't tell how long these are by like, how much you like yeah. this, right? Just hanging out on my shoulder. And suddenly, boom, I hit you from yeah. as far away. Right. So a stick you definitely hit. Sometimes I'd have to be a little closer. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of wondered why, you know, it was maybe that was uh, part of the effectiveness of the Power War Club is that they really don't look that threatening. It looks no. like you're holding a couple little paddles. Absolutely, like, yeah. What's he going to do yeah. with those paddles? You know, <laughs> that's <laughs> my, my tiny little dugout canoe, and then you just my little paddle. Yeah. <laughs> It's actually a canoe that was like tiny uh, with an outrigger. Yeah. I had made one of those for and it was like, it was not designed for my weight. Yeah. <laughs> it was just close to the water coming in the whole time. But uh, yeah, I myself didn't take the Macau World Cup seriously either. I saw it I got it in my hand. <laughs> it's so cute. Okay. <laughs> Looks like a fish. <laughs> fish or a paddle. But uh, no, I, uh, I like the weight of it. Sure. Sure. So, is there any other drill? Like, um, yeah. So, uh, as far as blocking and striking, yeah. So let's just go through it briefly. So, if you do the eight strikes, yeah. Right. All I'm going to do is turn uh, and face it. Right. I don't have to move my weapon at all. I just move my body. Right? I drop it a tiny bit for the lower ones. Right. And then for the high one coming straight down, I'll flip it over. Yeah. And then for the stab, I could just keep it like this, yeah. or I could flip it over. Uh, Yep. The view is on the track. Sure, so three of them. Okay. Oh, you're going to be there. Watch the diagonal one is like oh, oh, way, way different. <laughs> okay, oh, I was supposed to go this there. way. Yes. That's right. Go thrust. And just keep your. Um, oh, just. Yep, yeah, that way. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So that's kind of the, I think usually the faster, easier option is just to do that. Okay. Yeah. And then that downwards one, just make sure your fingers are around. around. Yeah, sometimes I feel like when I'm doing like kind of blocking like this, you want to choke up on the gun <laughs> a little bit. You shouldn't have to. You shouldn't yeah. have to. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I'm okay. If you move your hand up, I'm okay. Like, yeah, just okay. Hand. All right. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it worked. It worked. It worked. Um, 
Now keep in mind too, we don't typically want to stand in the same place. So yeah. although you're turning and facing the block, yeah. that's all you really need to do. Um, it, it becomes a little more fighting force to force. Yeah. Which isn't necessarily the smartest way to do things. Okay. All right. So what I would do if that first strike comes in, yeah. I shall do it basically. Okay. All right. So if it's a big strike coming in from yeah. this side, right? I would step a little bit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just a little bit. Just yeah. enough to dissipate some of that energy. Yeah. And either get you to tighten up. Yeah. Or stop you right here. Uh -huh. Now the other side of this, if you do that big strike, nice and slow, just so you don't get hurt on yourself. Okay. You're trying to take my head off. Okay. That's okay. the idea. So there. Okay. That's where I'm going. Oh. Wow. Well, I'm not going to stop weapon off weapon. Tip yeah. That might happen, but with the butterfly swords, uh, with a knife. Uh, Probably with this. That could be really positive. That arm comes in. As soon as that arm comes in, if you do it one more time. Yeah. Boom. If you think about boom. If you think about the because these were made out of whalebone, if you're going whalebone to whalebone, right. clubs like they that, could shatter, right? Yeah, you're it's gonna be a competition of <laughs> whose club is stronger. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But if you cut off that, that limb a little bit, yeah. boom. Now I've struck and defended yeah. at the same time, uh -huh. right? So Again, I'm not thinking of striking your arm. Yeah. I'm thinking of just defending myself. Yeah. And the harder you try to hit me with that, the yeah. more it's going to hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Wow. So that's why I have uh, some padded weapons as well. Uh -huh. Because I'm not training a real weapon or even like hard wood weapons yeah. um, against someone's limbs. Because it hurts, right? Even though these are made out of pine, <laughs> um, they still hurt. Yeah. They a weigh lot. probably a couple pounds. I'm sure they can break a bone pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so keep in mind that's what in reality you're going to do, right? With swords and anybody you have. Yeah. Don't worry about going for their weapon. That's like a kid's, uh, you know, pirate sword fighting sort of thing to do, yeah. right? Or fencing up to a point. But even then, they're going for the body. Right? They're yeah. trying to get to the body. Yeah. A quick parry maybe to the to the saber or whatever they're fighting with, foil, and then. Uh, all right. Yeah. So, what about some? Is there any weak directing clothes instead of meeting it? Um, and oh, okay. so that so, you could yeah. kind of redirect the force a different way instead of so worrying bon, about bon sal, the, the turning it over one uh -huh. is a good one for some yeah. of us, right? So if it's a straight poke, yeah. right, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. That one, all right. If it's straight down, I'm not necessarily doing this. You yeah. could, but if you want to redirect it, again, step off the line. Yeah. Let okay. it go. Boom. All right. That would make more sense because I'm sure it was just a big fear of like, getting more out and broken. Especially oh. since it probably took a year to make one club. <laughs> right. Tools, power tools, are great. Right. Wow. wow. And then, uh, you can think about it in terms of like a natural reaction. If yeah. something's coming for your head, mm -hmm. uh, you're either gonna freeze and take it, yeah. or you're gonna freak out and move. Yeah. Right. So, uh, I'd say the best option is to move. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. So you can you can do this, yeah. but it's redirecting that energy. Mm -hmm. Um, How other, do you think this yeah. would be used against like a spear? Uh, I'd want two of them against the spear. Yeah. <laughs> Just so I can help trap that weapon. Yeah. Um, so with any long range weapon versus short range weapon, uh, again, you don't want to fight the weapon. Yeah. Right. So if it's a if it's a six foot long spear, you can keep me back here. Uh -huh. I can't do much to you. Yeah. Right? You're so, the, the exactly. So I need to get into you. So I need to get in here. And hit you with it, yeah. All right, so I need to close that distance, yeah. uh, get around the spear. So if I had two, then I would be, oh, fine. Yeah. All right. So you can kind of knock, knock it out of the way, check, maybe hit the arm, yeah. and you kind of work it like a ladder towards the person, right? Climb towards them, uh, getting in there. Also, that's one advantage of having a spear is you can go low to high uh -huh. really quick. Yeah, yeah. Just a little absolutely. Subtle. Any long stick or staff. Spear, but the downfall is when somebody gets inside. Then it's range. much trickier. Yes, and if you're dedicated to your to your weapon, uh -huh. then you're gonna get you're gonna lose, right? So if you can abandon your weapon and start using your other weapons instantly, that's where you become a more unified warrior. So, yeah. um, for instance, if you do that, uh, you have a spear, yeah. right? Typically, my my main thing is I'm not gonna have someone just stand there and do that. They're gonna come with a big swing at. Because yeah. it's a spear, right? Boom! Or stab or something, yeah. right? So what I'm going to do, as that comes towards me, it's kick, uh -huh. right? That closes the distance for me. Boom! And then hit. Right? So um, using your other weapons, right? Yeah. My leg is my longest weapon here. Boom! Right? 
attractive. It's more of a sidekick, even longer. Yeah. All right. Now, I don't know how many people can pull off a decent sidekick, but you know, it's if you train it, and, you know, you can probably pull it off, right? I had no one kick. I had. <laughs> Well, <laughs> it's good to have a few options, right? I, I had a guy, a student once, who said, oh, I'd never do a pressing kick, right? It's like this kind of a kick, yeah. right? And I'm like, well, typically I wouldn't either, but it's nice to be flexible enough and work it enough that if you did have the, op the opening, why wouldn't you use it? Yeah. He's like, well, it's just not practical. And I'm like, well, okay, I'm gonna do a pressing kick to you, and you block it. And we'll see how practical it is, right? <laughs> so he knows. I said, okay, it's coming from this leg. I'm yeah. gonna kick you on this side. Okay. So he's ready to go. Ready to go. Wow. Hit him the side of the head. He was like, oh. Okay. And I was like, see, like it could work, right? Your hands are up. You were ready, and I hit you from like this close, right? My hands are up here. Wow. <laughs> All right. So, what does he do? He's like, well, I still wouldn't use it. <laughs> I'm like, but I just showed you it could work. It's like maybe you wouldn't use it, but why would you, if anyone else would use it? Yeah. If, so, so I did it again, yeah. hit him again. And he walked away saying, yeah, I'd still never use it. Like, oh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, so, so the weapons that you train, right. right? the tools that you train and, and drill and work, those are the ones that are gonna come out when you need yeah. them. Right? If you say, well, you know what, in class, we kind of do it this way, but in reality, I do it this way. Yeah. I was like, well, that's probably not what's going to come out in reality when you know the adrenaline starts going, you know, narrow vision, you know, yeah. all, all the stuff that goes along with that. So if you're training all the time uh -huh. to just hit weapons, yeah, all right, that's what's going to come out. You're instinctively yeah. going to go uh -huh. for the weapon. Yeah. So it is nice sometimes under control, right, and being nice to your partners or maybe getting a padded one yeah. to actually hit the limbs, yeah. right? Actually go with it, try it with two. Try it from your left hand, try it from your right hand, yeah. uh -huh. right? Um, so a simple drill like this, just going through it, suddenly you can, uh, uh, even without the combinations yeah. you were talking about, like going one, uh, one, one, or one, two, one, three, right, all yeah. that. Just just changing up your targets. Yeah. Changing up, you know, having a slice, having an edge, and then nice to go like whack your partner a bit. These are short enough, I found you can actually practice the and use yeah. the arms for... Yeah, and then you don't have to worry about, about it hurting, hurting right? Uh-huh. Yeah, he, he doesn't mind it. <laughs> yeah. like this. I think we can wrap things up for now. Cool. So um, Jeremy's been very instrumental in helping us figure out how this ancient weapon was used. Uh, yesterday we had a, a class, uh, it was a self-defense and introduction to uh, war clubs. Uh, the class went pretty good. Uh, we did a bunch of partner drills, um, there was even some kids there experimented on. and. Um, I'm hoping on the next episode here, we'll end up actually doing some testing and see how good these can smash. So uh, thanks for joining us and see you in the next episode.